Fighting for Basic Human Rights for Migrants in Libyan Detention Centers The Beledi Institute for Human Rights works to improve the lives of migrants held in Libyan detention centers in both the east and west of the country. Headed by Tariq Lamnoum, the team visits these centers on an ongoing basis and lobbies the authorities to improve the conditions of migrant detainees. Libya has long been a magnet for migrants seeking to travel onto Europe, and many of these migrants suffer horrific abuses while in the country. Last May, 30 migrants lost their lives and 11 more were injured when an armed group attacked the headquarters of a human trafficker in Mazda in a region to the southwest of the capital Tripoli. This is just one of many similar attacks. The Biladi Institute for Human Rights were one of many human rights organizations to condemn this vicious attack and to demand the closure of such migrant warehouses that openly sell, smuggle, and traffic migrants across Libya. The International Organization for Migration, IOM, estimates that there are some 654,000 migrants in Libya, including Nigerian, Chadian, Sudanese, and Nigerian as well as Egyptian nationals, with men making up 89% of this total. Around 1,500 of these migrants are detained in official centers run by the Department for Combating Illegal Migration, DCIM, under the Ministry of Interior of the UN-recognized Tripoli Government of National Accord, GNA. While these sheltering centers vary in quality, conditions generally fall short of international standards, with human rights abuses common. Migrants endure arbitrary and indefinite detention, inhumane detention conditions, sexual abuse, forced labor as well as torture, and other ill treatment. Most detainees are held in these centers without due process, or access to lawyers or judicial authorities to challenge the legality of their detention. And few detained migrants are brought to court, although this is stipulated as a requirement in Libyan immigration legislation. Thousands more migrants are held in makeshift centers controlled by the militias, where they are kept in conditions unfit for human habitation. These places are typically overcrowded and unhygienic, with little or no access to running water, washing facilities, or latrines. Detainees are often subjected to extreme violence, beatings, and torture, and women routinely suffer sexual abuse and rape. Beledi Tariq Lamloum reckons that there are probably about 4,000 migrants now held in government and militia-run detention centers across the country. The Beledi team of 12 have documented countless cases of human rights abuses and mistreatment of migrant detainees in these centers. They monitor the situation in 45 such centers, visiting each center several times a month and spending several hours on site during each visit. They are now building a database of human rights abuses informed by these visits. Lamloum admits it was the experience of close family members who sought asylum in Europe that prompted his interest in improving the situation for migrants in Libya. My relatives spent three years living in shelters for asylum seekers. I saw firsthand the assistance they received from government and from civil society organizations. In my view, migrants in Libya have the right to these same basic human rights, he says. He explains that the situation for asylum seekers in Libya has long been complicated, but the lack of state authority and the ongoing civil war in the country since 2014 have made things far worse. Greed and racism are both big problems here. Too many people in Libya take advantage of the migrant situation. There are families who earn their living from migrants. They are involved in trafficking schemes, in extortion, and in selling migrants for labor. Multiple government agencies work with these migrants too, and there is an ongoing struggle for power among these entities. Corruption is a real issue, he relates. He goes on to explain that the DS DCIM detention center's catering contract was awarded by the Ministry of Interior to a company affiliated to officials. Officially, this contract sets out that migrants have the right to a balanced and varied diet, with three meals a day. In reality, their diet is restricted to small pieces of bread and undercooked carbohydrates, usually pasta, and there is usually just one meal a day. Unsurprisingly, malnutrition is widespread, with sometimes fatal consequences, as migrants are often detained for periods ranging from two days to months and sometimes up to two years with no possibility of legal aid or of their detention being reviewed by judicial authorities. He relates that no provisions are made for pregnant or nursing women, and many detention centers also hold unaccompanied minors, as most lack human rights complaint registration systems. Family tracing and reunification is impossible. He admits that this situation facilitates the disappearance of migrants from detention. Over the past years, Lamlou and his team have built up a reputation as experts in international law 
and human rights law, and they are frequently consulted by international agencies and governments for their insights. He is also a frequent speaker on radio, and he presents a weekly show without visa, focused on the situation of migrants. In recent times, Beladi is increasingly focused on advocacy to reform human rights practices in the country, particularly regarding detainee rights. In 2018, Lamloum took part in an international advocacy mission to Geneva, where he reported to the OHCHR's working group on enforced or involuntary disappearances. Beledi has filed a number of cases in EU courts regarding the violation of migrants detainees. Lamloum is grateful for ED funding that has provided Beledi with support for training, capacity building, logistics and exchange of experience with EU and other international actors enabling them to take on such cases. Lamloum agrees that a large part of Beladi's success is thanks to the good working relationships he has developed with key government officials in Libya, particularly those in the Ministry of Interior, who have direct responsibility for the DCIM controlled centers. These contacts help to maintain access to the detention centers for his staff and in turn help them to advocate for an improvement in detainee conditions. He admits that the unstable political situation in Libya can make this a challenging work as there is a large turnover in staff as new officials are constantly appointed. He points to a number of recent successes. For instance, Beledi recently persuaded the Ministry of Interior to establish small libraries with books on human rights and legal issues in detention centers to the east of the country. With the ongoing coronavirus outbreak, Beledi are continuing their advocacy work and were recently one of the signatories of an open letter to the Libyan judiciary requesting that the safety and health of detained migrants is maintained during this period. Staff members remain in contact with detainees by phone, and their field visits to detention centers have continued. The ongoing curfew in Libya is a much greater challenge to the organization. As residents are confined to their homes from 6 p.m. each evening and each weekend, Cash flow is difficult too, as all banks are now closed. Despite the odds, Lamloum is determined to continue Beladi's work of visiting detention centers, producing reports and lobbying the authorities for better treatment of migrants. He notes that when the Libyan parliament in Tripoli recently decided to establish a human rights committee, they sought out advice from Beladi, which he sees as a clear vote of confidence in his organization.